Good evening, everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank the uh, organizing chairman, Dr. GVK, for this opportunity. Um, respected my professor teacher, Dr. Madhavan sir, is also there. And happy here to talk for 10 minutes on type 1.5 diabetes. This uh, start with a case study. It's a 29-year-old female. Uh, 29 year old male with a polyuria and weight loss in the previous four months, no recurrent abdominal pain, no family history, BMI 20, urine ketones negative, and uh, glycemic control for the first one year was achieved with OAD. Record insulin thereafter. The GAD antibodies are highly positive, and normal imaging of abdomen as well as fasting C peptide was low. So the diagnosis is very obvious to you and we are going to talk about none other than the 1.5 diabetes or LADA. The latent autoimmune diabetes of adults is a form of diabetes with features of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes and as they have before been termed as type 1.5 diabetes. In Japan, the synonym used is slowly, progr slowly progressive insulin dependent type 1 diabetes mellitus and the American Diabetic Association lists LADA as type 1 diabetes that evolves more slowly than the classic disease and does not recognize it as a specific type of diabetes mellitus. On the other hand, the Immunology for Diabetes Society has specified three criteria for the diagnosis of LADA. One, age greater than 35 years, positive autoantibodies to islet beta cells and insulin independent for at least initial six months after initial diagnosis. And uh, the LADA itself is a heterogeneous disease. Some patients have high antibody titers, a low BMI, and progressive to insulin therapy faster. On the other hand, you can see a, uh, there's another spectrum where have a low antibody titers, features of insulin resistance like higher BMI, and progress more slowly uh, to requiring insulin. So it's a heterogeneous disease. And what is the etiology of that? The risk for acquiring the LADA is highest in carriers of certain HLA haplotypes. The HLA genes code for the major HLA which have important immunoregulatory function. There is a paucity of studies investigating the role of environmental factors like lifestyle in LADA, the reason for being the need for antibody measurement in every newly diagnosed adult diabetic patients to identify and classify the patients as LADA, unavailability of the lifestyle information antecedent to the diagnosis of LADA the absence of comparable cohort groups and the inadequate sample size of the LADA patients in the studies enhances the power of the study. So there are some factors like increased physical activity, moderate alcohol use and the intake of fatty fish have a protective effect on the risk of LADA. Two or more cups of coffee daily increase the risk of LADA. I again tell you that there's only a, the studies are very limited and uh, how do we diagnose LADA? Age at least 30 years or older, the positive for at least one of the autoantibodies found in type 1 diabetes, free from insulin treatment for the first six months after diagnosis. You can see the 20% of the persons diagnosed as having non-obesity related type 2 diabetes may actually have LADA. So it becomes a more and more uh, responsibility for us to make a diagnosis, of, not to make a diagnosis of type 2 in everyone, and when you suspect such a lean patients, that age group, um, and you, you think you know, that we need to work for, work for a LADA. So LADA versus type 2 diabetes, the C-peptide levels, LADA have low levels versus normal or high in type 2 diabetes. The glutamic acid decarboxylase antibodies common in type 1 diabetes, early age of onset, non-obese individuals, no family history of early onset diabetes, the ketosis prone may require insulin after initial 6 months. This is a differentiation. Epidemiology, it's also the most prevalent form of autoimmune diabetes as a whole. When you take the di autoimmune diabetes as a whole, the LADA comes as the most prevalent form. And there are geographic and ethnic differences in incidence. In the multicentric action LADA study of the group in Europe, almost 10% of the 6,000 adults with adult onset diabetes had islet cell anti autoantibodies. In the UKPDS study, the antibody positivity among the presumptive diagnosis of type 2 were approximately 12%. So the 10 to 12 percent compared to the European and UK, and most patients with LADA are positive for a single islet antibody, and glutamic acid decarboxylase antibody is the most predominant. And the pathophysiology is very detailed, 
and the islet cell beta cell autoimmunity antedates the onset of LADA by several years. This is followed by insulin resistant that causes overt hyperglycemia and the diagnosis of autoimmune insulin independent diabetes mellitus. And uh, so the predominant macrophage CD68 infiltration was shown in the islet cells as opposed to type 1 diabetes. And uh, again, there's a proliferation marker of nuclear antigen and anti-inflammatory cytokine interleukin 10 were elevated. And uh, again, looking at the regulatory T lymphocyte pro produce protein-like transcription factors called forkhead box protein 3, that's FOXP3, which suppresses the autoimmunity. And again, the IG4 class of GADA is more prevalent in LADA than in type 1 diabetes. This yields a yeah, T helper 2 lymphocyte immune response, which may be one of the explanation for the delayed onset of diabetes in LADA compared to type 1 diabetes. A variant of the insulin autoantibody 2A, that is, is more frequently found in LADA and may, may be useful in its detection. There is a positive correlation between the BMI and interleukin 17, a pro-inflammatory cytokine from peripheral beta B lymphocyte. History and diagnosis. Symptoms of polyuria, polydipsia, nocturia, fatigue, visual changes, tingling in the feet, weight loss may be uh, present or can be asymptomatic also. A personal family history of autoimmune disease. A history of low birth weight is also a strong indicator. History of smoking and alcohol consumption. A diagnostic screening tool with the three criteria was used to identify LADA in diabetic patients over 50 years of age like low or normal BMI, a high fasting blood sugar of 270, A1C 10%, are greater despite good compliance and loss of weight despite a diet constant in calorie content. So patients with LADA are usually ketosis resistant at first diagnosis. How do we evaluate it? A positive antibody to any one of the islet antigens is the hallmark of LADA. The IA2A which is associated increasingly with the LADA2 phenotype, insulin antibodies and zinc transporter isoform antibody. The glucagon stimulation test and mixed meal tolerance test have been validated and found to be useful and the C-peptide is a cost effective when used as an initial test to distinguish LADA from type 2 diabetes. The outline investigation for the di other diabetic patients should be employed in LADA which includes the glucose A1C and the measure the glycemic variability, lipid profile and other GFR. How do we manage it? Therapies which will preserve the beta cell function are a priority. Sulfonylureas are a poor choice for LADA as they deplete beta cells. Metformin may help initially in glycemic control in patients with LADA with higher BMI. Thiosolinone diones have anti-inflammatory effects on the beta cell and can prolong their survival and can be useful if used in the earlier stage in LADA. And uh, the GLP-1 receptor agonist, Dulaglutide has shown improvement in beta cell functions in patients with LADA. Addition of vitamin D to insulin or DPP-4 inhibitors improved glycemic control and preserving the beta cell function. SGLT2 inhibitors have not been well studied in patients with LADA. There's a novel immunomodulating treatment with alum formulated recombinant human GAD65. By administering three injections of four micrograms each into a lymph node in the groin along with the daily oral vitamin D is in the phase two of the trial, uh, GAD in LADA trial. And uh, differential diagnosis, the main challenge is to differentiate from type two diabetes the first degree related to having an other autoimmune disorders like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Graves' disease and rheumatoid arthritis might give a clue. On the other hand, type 1 can present very, it can, type 1 we cannot, miss, we cannot miss it, it presents dramatically explosive with most of the time with, ke, with ketosis and uh, more than one autoantibody is easily differentiated from the LADA. Again, sometimes the maturity answer of diabetes of the young is mistakenly diagnosed as type 1 diabetes and type 2 and LADA. And the prognosis, the patients with LADA have a mortality as high as type 2 diabetes despite having more favorable metabolic parameters. In the Hunt study, it was shown that hyperglycemia was the only significant influencing factor and not the component of the metabolic syndrome in determining the mortality that was chiefly due to the cardiovascular disease. It is therefore goes without saying that strict glycemic control is the key to improve the prognosis of LADA. The complication again, small fiber neuropathy has been found and more often than with the age and duration of type 2 diabetes. Again, long-term follow-up patients with LADA reveals a lower risk for the first nine years, but higher risk in later years for microvascular complications. 
patients with LADA has got a much carotid arteries, atherosclerosis, as in type 1 and type 2, despite a better vascular risk profile. Increased cardiovascular disease and mortality in LADA, similar to type 2 diabetes. Bone resorption is reduced in LADA, but the mechanism is different from the type 2 diabetes. And uh, so, to conclude, uh, when do you su suspect LADA in any adult patient with diabetes with ketosis, LADA shows destruction of the pancreatic beta cell, insulin and uh, LADA is ke sometimes ketosis prone, LADA shows low C peptide levels and the positive autoantibody and then again insulin will be the treatment of choice later. Thank you very much.